Hello students, I'm going to do a sample problem today where we're going to look a lot at stoichiometry and we're also going to run some calculations that deal with a limiting reactant. Briefly, in case you're not familiar with that, if I have two things and I react them together to produce some sort of products over here, in real life it is not likely that you have exactly the correct number of these compared to these so that both of your reactants magically are all gone and disappear. Usually you have more of one than the other in whatever ratios they are required. So we give them the names the limiting reactant or the limiting reagent, same thing. That's the one that you run out of first and the other one is the excess reactant or the excess reagent. That's the one that you tend to have more of. So all of these things, though, are just a series of stoichiometry problems, so there's a lot of good practice in here. To save time, I went ahead and I gave us all of the molar masses. I don't even think we need all of them, but we have them all sitting there. And I am going to briefly start, though, by drawing up something that I know many of you have seen before. And I'm just going to kind of talk about it a little bit, though. Okay, and here's the picture I'm talking about. Anytime you are doing a stoichiometry problem, it is just a series of moving from one type of information to another type of information through conversion factors. So every double arrow that I show in this is just a possible conversion factor, though it might take the form of something a little bit more complicated in your mind. For example, I could have the volume of a gas in a reaction, and I might have to use something like the ideal gas law to figure out the moles of that thing that's reacting. So X could be any of these species up here. Y could be any of a different one of these species up here. They can both be on the left, both reactants. They could both be on the right, or you could cross the arrow in the middle, and that's fine. The key to any stoichiometry problem is this conversion factor where you relate some number of moles of X to some number of moles of Y. And that's these numbers. That's what we refer to as the stoichiometry there. So with all that being said, let's just take a global view of what's going to happen. This question asks me to figure out what the limiting reactant is. So that means I'm going to look at iron and I'm also going to look at the hydrochloric acid. I need to allow these things to react together and I need to make some products. Now I could pick either of these products to kind of focus on, but if you skip down for a second to part B, it says that how much hydrogen gas will I be generating? For me, that seems like I'm going to save myself some time if I focus on hydrogen gas. So that's going to be one of my species that I'm talking about and specifically I'm going to make that guy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these other ones individually and I'm going to see, for example, how much hydrogen gas will I create if I assume that I'm going to use up all of my iron and then this guy is in excess. So for this problem, I was given mass of iron. That means I would start down this path and I would use the molar mass of iron to get to the moles of iron, then use my stoichiometry and figure out how many moles of hydrogen gas I'd be getting. Then what you do is you just swap it up. Then you say, I'm going to assume that I have as much iron as I could ever possibly want, and I will talk about the hydrochloric acid, and I will say, how much could I get if I use all of that up? So here's the concentration. I'm given concentration of hydrochloric acid, and I'm also given the volume of it, though. So I have enough information using the idea of molarity to get to moles this time though it's moles of hydrochloric acid, then I use the stoichiometry step which is going to be six HCl's to every three hydrogen to get over here to moles of hydrogen again. One of those avenues will produce a lot of hydrogen. One of those avenues will not produce very much hydrogen and the one that doesn't produce much is going to be our limiting one and we say that we have our limiting reagent right there. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, first we're going to start with iron and that will be our starting material. We're going to assume that we have excess HCl and so we don't even worry about it in the calculation. But again, we're going to produce hydrogen gas. Picked that because part B is going to want us to find that anyways. So start with your initial info, 4.50 grams 
of iron. Remember that would have been one of my little bubbles off to the side on that chart. And what we want to do is we want to go to that central bubble that was on the left. And to do that we use molar mass. I gave that to us over here. 55.85 grams of iron, one mole iron. I highly recommend that you actually write the species. It really doesn't take much time but it's really important for keeping track of what's going on because this next step is that central double arrow, the stoichiometry one, where I'm going to go from two moles of iron to three mole of H2. Now I could stop there and I could figure out how much hydrogen I'm going to create. I'm just going to go ahead and inch forward a little bit more because I see it coming in part B. Let's just see how many grams using this molar mass of hydrogen I would create. So one mole of H2 is going to give me 2.016 grams of H2. Now I have grams of iron canceling that, mole of iron canceling mole of iron, mole H2 canceling mole H2. You see my remaining units are grams H2. This number ends up being 0 0.24365 grams H2. So that's how much I would make given that starting circumstance where I said that we use up all the iron and we have excess HCl. But now what we want to do is we want to just rinse and repeat, do the same thing again, but assume excess iron and really calculate based on this HCl. The starting information of this was a volume and a molarity. Remember molarity is moles of the stuff per liter of solution. So there's enough info in there to figure out the moles of HCl that you start with, which gets you into that central bubble on the left of my original diagram. I'm just going to put it in one chain. Some of you may not prefer this visually. Um, whatever you want to do to figure out your moles of HCl that you begin with. So I'm writing my molarity like this. The numerator is moles of HCl, the denominator is one liter. So that's my molarity. Then I would multiply by this value, which technically is not a conversion factor. So I don't need to have both a numerator and a denominator. That's just a volume. But there's my molarity times volume. That's going to be moles. And now I'm ready for my stoichiometry, which says 6 mole of HCl is going to go to 3 mole of H2. And just like last time, we'll take it one step further, and I'll have 1 mole of H2 it's going to be 2.016 grams H2, mole HCl, mole HCl, liter, liter. Well, that's mole H2. I forgot the L there. Mole H2. You can see that, again, I finished up my units in grams of H2. And this one is 0 0.32256 grams of H2. So now you just do a simple comparison of these two values over here. You can see when I started with iron and assumed that that reacted completely, I got less hydrogen out. That means that iron is the limiting reactant. So here is iron. You would just write down that species. In this case, it was either iron or HCl, but this guy is the limiting now, the beauty in the way that we handled this problem is if you look at part B, how many grams of hydrogen gas would be created? It is sitting right here. So I actually already have that part done as well. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how many grams of the excess reactant will be remaining. Well, we know the excess reactant is HCl. So the strategy here is to figure out how much HCl is going to react, and then just subtract it off from the amount that we started with. So how much HCl is going to react? We'll start with iron and we'll just bounce over here. So this is a stoichiometry situation where we're not even concerned about the products. I want to know the ratio of those guys. So the beginning of this looks really similar to before, where I start with this many grams of iron, and then I do my conversion to get to moles of iron, just like before one mole iron. Then my double arrow right in the middle of that diagram is the stoichiometry between these guys here. So two mole of iron for every six mole of HCl. This time I'm going to opt to just stop at moles, not go to grams yet. Just get rid of that. 
This is the answer I get when I do that multiplication, mole of HCl. And this is specifically how much would react. Now we kind of had somewhere in our work how much we started with, but I never really put that out, so I, I kind of need to find that again. But it was just this molarity idea. So how much HCl did we start with? 3.20 moles of HCl per one liter. Then I need to multiply that by basically just 0.1 liters. So that's a simple move of the decimal place. So I have 0 0.320 mole to start with. So the difference in these, that's how much I'm going to have left over. The difference in those two numbers is 0 0.0783 mole HCl. Then I would multiply that by the molar mass of HCl, which is right here, and I get 2.855 grams, and that's left over. So that is the final answer for part C. The big take home message for any problem like this really is in just keeping track of what's going on. That's why I'm so insistent that people need to actually label moles or grams of what species. It'll really help. And also just keeping the big global picture of what's going on with the stoichiometry problem like that diagram I drew up for you. Hopefully this problem made sense to you and if it did you should let your computer know.